वैराग्य विद्या निज भक्ति योगा शिक्षार्थ मेक पुरुष पुराण श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य शरीर धारी कृपा बुद्धिर्य तम हम प्रपद्य मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंगे थे गिरिम यत कृपा तम हम बंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारणम वंश कल्पतुर्भ्य कृपा सिंधु पति तम पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास्तव गौर भक्त विंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वॉम वेलकम एवरी वन इन स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवत गीता वी कंटिन्यू स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवत गीता से भागवत गीता द जर्नी इज सच वी हर्ड दिस थिंग फ्रेज राइट टाइम स्टॉप्स is this how it's called time stop or yeah you got that right hmm so actually bhagavad gita is does this thing in one's life the whole practice of krishna consciousness uh it has the ability capacity natural natural ability capacity for the time to stop actually and we normally hear like in bollywood hollywood or general boy meets girl girl meets boy and then time stops um, and but in societal terms it doesn't seem to be and what is shown in movie is so much of like cover up actually so much of cover up but seeing bhagavad gita practicing krishna consciousness and bringing this into our life we can actually see time stopping well for this um, uh for this thing uh, uh, in this instance like um uh, krishna and arjuna when they were having their dialogue actually time stopped uh, both the parties either side they said okay we won't start the war until this dialogue comes to an end because krishna and arjuna are speaking we respect them so that is the culture krishna and arjuna are speaking now we respect them let them have their talk peacefully and once they are through then we start with the war so krishna stopped everything stopped uh, and uh, they say it took like about 48 minutes or 72 minutes something like that less than 72 minutes if i remember correct for this entire dialogue between krishna and arjuna to go through 72 minutes so look the just see the level of um, how do i say like consciousness level or see Uh, krishna being krishna and look at arjun even though he is so messed up even though he is such in, in such a precarious confused dilapidated state yet he was able to have this dialogue with krishna in just 72 minutes maximum that is so in order to understand and practice krishna consciousness the only requirement is sincerity of the heart that is the real requirement that willingness that inquisitiveness the genuineness mood to understand mood to question as well but with a view to understand that only that willingness that sincerity of the heart that faith is required that much so arjuna had that and in 72 minutes he was able to have this dialogue and completely recover or uncover himself all together so the entire practice of krishna consciousness is like this time stops as in the material clock stops then once material life ends actually when one starts practicing krishna consciousness and furthermore starts associating with devotees and when one takes further and for the shelter in the teachings in the message of krishna consciousness in the shelter of devotees and when one identifies a pure devotee in one's life and takes shelter uh, something called as initiation ceremony takes initiation uh, under the care and guidance of an 
pure devotee of Krishna, then material time stops, material life stops altogether. The realizations one would have in the practice of Krishna consciousness, the experiences, and this is what it is meant to be. This is how it is meant to be. So as we were discussing yesterday, we do not need to replace Arjuna. In this society, we find, okay, we need a replacement for him or her because there are too many. Uh, like could be a manager may not be able to handle so many people in his team. No, I've got already enough. I don't need any more, even if they may be well qualified. Or we need a replacement for this or that person. But such is not the case with Krishna. It is Krishna only since eternity. He is uh, interacting, reciprocating with all of us living entities, those in human bodies, those in plant bodies, animal bodies, whichever bodies, all living entities individually at a personal individual level, at an individual level, all of us simultaneously. And he can easily afford to. We'll see more the opulence of Krishna. We'll see more. He can easily afford, afford to actually. This is the thing. When we start falling more in more love with Krishna, na, we'll fall in love with the sweetness of Krishna, with the smile of Krishna, with his beauty. And this God factor, the fever of God factor and and um, theorizing or philosopher, philosophizing or intellectualizing, all this won't, should go away, should go away. In love, there is not like philosophizing or intellectualizing, that sort of thing. So when we see the sweetness, the beauty of Krishna, the sort of like, okay, no, this is the definition of God and all that should, that would fade away a bit. So time would stop. Uh, it's not like we stop functioning. No, we do function, but we won't be under the purview of material time. We won't be under the purview of material law of karma. That doesn't mean we don't act. No, we do act. But we won't be under the purview of material law of karma. We won't be taking in any material samskars, any material conditioning. Right. Thing is, the message is Krishna consciousness, Bhagavad Gita teachings. We, we live in this world but we need not be of this world. Yet living in this world, we need not be of this world. Once we understand what is my identity, then I not associate myself of this world in that sense, yes, no. So with this mood, with this hope, with this aspiration, prayer, we continue our study of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 10, text 16 onwards. Vaktum arhasi asese naam divya hi atma vibhutaya ya bir vibhuti bhilokan imam swam vyapyatish tasi. Okay. Uh, maybe Alexandra will read translation, Harsha read purport. <clears throat> Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you made all these worlds. In this verse, it appears that Arjuna is already satisfied with his understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. By Krishna's grace, Arjuna has personal experience, intelligence and knowledge and whatever else a person may have. And through all these agencies, he has understood Krishna has to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For him, there is no doubt. Yet he is asking Krishna to explain his all-pervading nature. People in general and the impersonalists in particular concern themselves mainly with all pervading nature of the Supreme. So Arjuna is asking, 
Krishna, how he exists in his all-pervading aspect through his different energies. One should know that this is being asked by Arjuna on behalf of the common people. Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. Hare Krishna. Anything associated with Krishna actually is divine. For us, it is Maya. But for Krishna, it's not Maya. For us, it's illusion. For Krishna, there is no illusion. Yeah. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, we know chapter four, 7, text 14, uh, Devi is a gunamai, mam maya duratyaya, mami vaya prapadyante, maya metam tarantite. So, Krishna's maya, uh, which is divine, for him everything is divine. Yeah. And this is why when we come across Krishna consciousness, we can attain divinity. We can attain the divinity. So, uh, for us, every, um, pretty much is largely Maya, but for Krishna, nothing is Maya. And see, this is one of the nature. Now, Arjuna is glorifying, he's sharing his realizations. And again, these are Arjuna's realizations. Uh, going through Bhagavad Gita, through this conversation dialogue, Arjuna was anyways a pure devotee of Krishna and it was by Krishna's um, divine arrangement that he was put into illusion so that we can benefit out of it. There has to be, um, Arjuna is playing a role, right? So Krishna chose Arjuna and put him under this illusion of confusion and things like that so that via Arjuna, he can reach out to us. And Arjuna, like he's uh, hearing the glories of Krishna, then now he's in response, he's sharing his heart, his realization. So these are the realizations of a pure devotee, which has not become my realizations yet to the good limit, to a full limit, to a good limit. So I should always bear this in mind that uh, these are Arjuna's realization. And this is the trouble in society, right? We discussed without becoming fully pure, if I think myself to be pure, very dangerous, very dangerous, especially spiritual practitioner. See, spiritual practitioner is a spiritual practitioner is generally always in the line of fire, right? He's always in kind of uh, treading on thin ice or as they say, huh? Because like generally speaking, if a spiritual, if someone is not practicing spirituality, practicing Krishna consciousness, okay, even if he's into any unfair means and all, there's, there's society. But then if someone is practicing Krishna consciousness and say any accidental fall down or something, wow, there's very less room for perhaps negotiation in that sense. So if I have not become fully pure, but if I claim or demonstrate or show, or if I consider myself that, wow, I become very pure, that's a very dangerous situation position to be. So if I truly always understand that uh, Arjuna is a pure devotee, I have not become a pure devotee yet. I would do myself a great deal of favor. And it's not meant to replace Arjuna. No, Krishna can interact with all of us simultaneously at the same time. He's doing it as well. For him, it's not a problem. So I also share my unique relationship with Krishna. And the more I practice in Krishna consciousness, I can one can experience this. Now, in hearing from Krishna and Arjuna in his like response, uh, param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram Param Bhavan. You, know? you are the uh, Supreme Personality of God. You are the Supreme Person, Supreme Abode, all this. And that develops, therein is developing a sense of greed, you know, wanting to know more. This is the thing when we come across a personality, someone who is very opulent, someone who is a big shot, as they say, perhaps someone who is too 
It was very, very good. We want to know more and more. People, you know, you know people spend nights on internet, actually. Nights on internet, reading about other personalities, hearing about other personalities and all. I want to know more, especially celebrities we see, right? Any small move, anything they do, oh, wow, what did he do, what did she do? So Arjuna also now is getting greedy and greed is such a great sign. Someone who can be greedy for Krishna is like, wow, leading towards perfection. Srila Rupa Goswami says, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. Kriyatam Yadi Kuto Api Labhyate. Tatra Lalyam Api Mulyam Ekalam. Janma Koti Sukrite Na Labhyate. So, to get this absorption, Krishna Mati Rasa Bhavita Mati. Na? So, so that my mind, my intelligence, Mati, my intelligence uh, finds natural absorption in the mellows, in the rasa, in the practice of Krishna consciousness. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. And this, it cannot be purchased uh, by any price or by making any endeavors as such also. Or not by like being millions or heaps of pious activities. Oh, I've, I'm a charitable person. That doesn't matter. No one, as we were discussing yesterday, right? No one can actually claim that, oh, yes, I deserve to practice Krishna consciousness. Doesn't matter however charitable a person is, how I'm a learned, scholarly, brahminical, saint, priestly family does he come from? No. No one can ever claim as such, oh, yeah, I actually deserve to practice Krishna consciousness. And no one can buy it for any price. The only thing is greed, when one develops greed, when one develops greed for Krishna. So again, greed is a good emotion. It can, it's actually a transcendent emotion if we channelize it towards realizing Krishna. Otherwise, mundane greed is going to make us uh, shallow, hollow altogether. Mundane greed is always going to feel, make me feel empty. Uh, greedy means what? Okay, person has some things, but still he's wanting more. He has some basic, but he's wanting more. And whatever more he gets, he's still like wanting more. So mundane greed will always feel me empty, make me feel empty. But this hankering for Krishna, Krishna consciousness greed, a sadhaka will always feel empty, but not morose. Because it is caused by love altogether. The basic foundation is of love is there. So now Arjuna hearing, knowing Krishna, hearing from other sages and all, he is becoming quite greedy. Oh Krishna, can you elaborate a bit? Can you tell us a bit more? And okay, for his on his part also greedy and wanting no more. Who wouldn't want to know more? And also for more so for our benefit. Because see, Krishna said in text 8, right? Aham sarvase prabhava mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante ma buddha bhava samanvita. Now I'm the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. Those who are wise, perfectly wise, they know this and they engage in my loving devotional service. So now... What does it mean you are the source? One may still argue, like, we people of Kaliuga of this world, we love arguing. And we love, like, bringing this logic, that logic, this point and that point. So to satisfy our qualms, eh, Arjuna is asking, can you kindly elaborate as well? What do you mean that I'm the source of all the material and spiritual worlds? And until and unless we get some sort of proofs, right? That, okay, look, this is the proof, this is the proof. Then I would struggle coming to practicing Krishna consciousness. So here Arjuna is everywhere. Arjuna is helping us to understand Krishna consciousness so that we can practice also. And many things in life is like a cyclical thing. The more we understand, the more one would want to practice. The more one practices, the more one would understand as well. And certainly Krishna consciousness is not on the platform of theory.
So this is what like uh, Arjuna is asking. Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. Uh, kindly reveal that mystery a bit. Kindly make it more, uh, that mystery more simpler and a bit more accessible or um, can, can you elaborate precisely on I am the source of all this material and spiritual worlds. So we can see a bit more. Any question or comments or thoughts for now? Okay, so let us read next 17. Katham vidya maham yogims Tvam sada parichintayan Keshu keshu che bhaveshu Chintyasmi Bhagavan Maya. Okay. Lucy read translation and um, maybe Alexandra can read proper, please. O oh Krishna, O oh Supreme Mystic, how shall I constantly think of you, and how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered, O oh Supreme Personality of Godhead? As it is stated in the previous chapter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is covered by his Yoga Maya. Only surrendered souls and devotees can see him. Now Arjuna is convinced that his friend Krishna is the supreme Godhead, but he wants to know the general process by which all the pervading Lord can be understood by the common man. Common men, including the demons and atheists, cannot know Krishna because he is guarded by his yoga maya energy. Again, these questions are asked by Arjuna for their, for their benefit. The superior devotee is con concerned not only for his own understanding, but for the understanding of all mankind. So Arjuna, out of his mercy, because he is Vaishna, Vaishnava, a devotee, is opening for the common man, for the common man, the understanding of all pervasiveness of the Supreme Lord. He addresses Krishna specifically as yogin because Sri Krishna is the master of the yogi maya energy. She is convert, covered and uncovered to the common man. The common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna. Therefore, he has to think mater materially. Arjuna is considering the mode of thinking of the materialistic persons of this world. The word kisu kisu ka bahavesu or bahaveshu refer to the material nature, the word bhava meaning physical thing. Because materialists cannot understand Krishna spiritually, they are advised to concentrate the mind on the physical thing and try to see how Krishna is manifested by physical representation. O oh Krishna, O oh Supreme Mystic, how shall I constantly think of you? And how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered, O oh Supreme Personality of Godhead? See, <clears throat> the heart of a pure devotee is actually even more soft, merciful than Krishna himself. Say. In the sense, uh, Arjuna is even more willing, inclined, looking for ways. How can Krishna consciousness be passed on, rubbed on, upon, passed on amongst the us conditioned souls, for us conditioned souls? You see, this Bhagavad Gita was spoken 5,000 years ago in the middle of a battlefield. But it is timeless wisdom even now, today, so contemporary, so relevant. So whosoever reads it, ma'am, why is it absolute knowledge, absolute? Okay, let me ask this question. What does absolute mean? We hear in many places in 
and translation purpose absolute read and write. What does absolute mean? Absolute reality, absolute truth. Like the utmost of something? Like the supreme? Not even the... Mm, okay, continue, you continue. Well, no, I was like the supreme knowing of something, like the, like the most defined. Yeah, like there is no other option. It's like, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, at most, see, there is a thing with at most. At most could mean, okay, top class or sort of highest, say, but yet it may be within this realm or somewhat hierarchy, somewhat ranking. That at most could also be beaten up, say, in the sense. Huh? Absolute means something divine altogether something which is not of this world, free from any mundane tinge, any of the modes of material nature. Absolute means simple. Absolute means without duality. One which has no two sides. As in Krishna is absolute, meaning Krishna is all good, all one-sided. He's not like beautiful and sometimes not so beautiful or no. No. Krishna is all sweet, all beautiful. Absolute means all one-sided. And what is that one-sided? Completely spiritual, completely transcendental, completely divine, completely out of this world. This world is of modes, right? Goodness, passion. Goodness as in you find a good person, say. A passionate person or lazy, ignorant person. So this world works in various different energies. But absolute means absolute energy. There's no two-sided energy, good energy, bad energy, no. Absolute energy, completely spiritual, completely divine. Although Krishna, we see in Krishna's pastimes, um, he's not notorious, mischievous, whatever. But it is all absolute, all on the absolute platform, everything divine, all one-sided good. And in this world, we do not see anything one-sided good. And this is why the practice or the joy of Krishna consciousness is also of the absolute nature. And I need to twin in myself to that absolute nature, which will come about when I practice. When I start practicing, I can realize my own original consciousness uh, i can uncover myself actually it's not like to recover oneself more of uncovering that is there it just needs uncovering so absolute meaning something which has not got two sides which is not um, not duality which does not have duality in it all one-sided Krishna consciousness is all one-sided. Krishna is all one-sided, all good, all spiritual, all beautiful, all divine, all sublime, all transcendental. So throughout, Arjuna is helping us understand absolute meaning, something which is yeah beyond timeless circumstance. Timeless wisdom. Na? So if it is timeless wisdom, it is absolute. Eternity eternal if something is eternal then it is absolute nature if something is all bliss and such bliss that which is ever increasing which means it is absolute nature see in the path of krishna consciousness there is no concept of eternal hell there is no concept of eternal uh, stagnation eternal punishment eternal suffering no if anything eternal, it has to be bliss. It has to be joy. It has to be love, care, peace, genuineness, friendship, say that. So that is for sure eternal rasa with Krishna. 
but there is no concept of eternal stagnation eternal hell eternal burning in fire no so etern uh, absolute means eternal all good beyond time place and circumstance timeless wisdom this is why krishna consciousness bhagavad gita teachings is all absolute beyond time place and circumstance which means there is no prerequisite needed the only thing is willingness no that faith that sincerity that subject of the heart just that simplicity of the heart just that much is required not going on with an judgmental offending mentality for finding offending mentality so here uh, yeah pure devotee is way more merciful than actually krishna huh? and uh, here arjuna so much kind and merciful for us he is helping us now understand the practicality of things katham vidyam aham yogins tvam sada parichintayam tvam sada na unto you sada always parichintayam think of you how can i meditate how can i think of you and keshu keshu che in what what way in what what manner keshu keshu che bhaveshu chintyasmi bhagwan maya now look arjuna is who he is a married man he is a family man he has got wife children yeah, family he is a king a ruler an administrator hmm? so he has to look after the citizens he has to go for court hearings and look after people look after and kings meaning not just humans look after humans no look after plants look after animals as well and look after people's spiritual and material well being both simultaneously so arjuna being a he wasn't like a a, a, a sanyasi a renunciant monk no he was a family person so he is wanting something practical how he can apply in his family life again arjuna is a pure devotee but it is for us our kindness how can we actually in what different ways what does meditation mean in what different ways can i actually meditate upon krishna so much so that my meditation becomes 24 hours so as we yesterday discuss uh, there could be hundreds and teen, unlimited excuses for me not to practice krishna consciousness not to understand not to grow further in krishna consciousness go and grow further but we would i wouldn't find one single sufficient reason hundred of excuses but no single sufficient reason for me to not practice for me to not advance in krishna consciousness so arjuna is now trying to help us how to practically can i in what moods how practically can i meditate upon you krishna how can i make it 24/7 because mahaprabhu's teachings is what kirtanya sada hari so it's not like krishna consciousness is not like okay i'm krishna consciousness conscious on weekends or i'm krishna consciousness when i'm in the temple when i go to work in the office i'm not krishna conscious i don't have to be no well krishna is all pervading and look because of my faults finding mentality only that even though is all pervading but yet i am not able to connect with him and this is what arjuna is helping that you are all pervading so give me the in a way tips and tricks how i can connect with you throughout 24 hours and because otherwise um, सावधानी हटी दुर्घटना घटी है ना समथिंग या आई थिंक दिस दिस इन इंग्लिश एज वेल नॉट कमिंग टू माय माइंड यू नो व्हेन इन मोटरवेज हाईवेज अ लिटिल डिविएशन एंड कैन लीड टू एक्सीडेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग सो इफ आई कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ कैन आई सी कृष्णा ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स अ डे हाउ कैन आई मेडिटेट ऑन हिम से वेन आई एम इन outside of temple environment when i am in fit family and all so how to come to that position and how do i understand because if i 
If I deem any casual, then very soon I will be pulled down. Very soon. See, Maya is very smart. We should always realize and understand this. That when we are in the association of devotees, Maya wouldn't uh, much uh, disturb us. And when we feel very enthused, confident, and also, yeah, okay, fine. Wow, you are doing great. See, Maya fuels our ego. Materially and also spiritually also we can be fueled our ego. Oh, wow, you're such a spiritual person. Oh, you're spiritually, you're doing fab. You're doing great. You're doing wonders. Wow, what a sadhaka. Oh, what a surrendered soul. What a devotee. Wow. I might, I might, might be getting puffed up, right? So Maya knows when to pull the brakes, when to push the buttons and all. So when I, when I'm in good association, feeling enthused and all, Maya may not disturb me. And she's waiting for an opportunity. So if I give any slight opportunity, any slackness, uh, then easily I can get sidetracked and slowly, steadily, I can be off track. This is why Arjuna is asking how to keep myself safe, protected 24 hours. Because Krishna consciousness is not just a weekend engagement. It's not just a retreat engagement. Oh, I've come to retreat and uh, and then off I go and then, yeah. It's not like when only when I'm in the company of devotees, I be Krishna consciousness. But when, we, when with my parents and all, or with my friends or people at work and all, uh, I cannot be, I need not be or... So, yeah, and uh, Maya... Uh, it's very powerful when we do not expect to be in the trap of my or get sidetracked. That is when she can easily pick us up. When we, where we least expect, expect or when we least expect as such. So for our benefit, Arjuna is asking this. Let us see a couple more. Any thoughts, questions or comment? Yeah, just when you were talking about like, just when, like, what just just as what you were saying, when you're with devotees, that's the only time you talk about Krishna consciousness. It's just reminding me of whenever I like do a tarot reading or host ceremony, it would be like, take this time to integrate what you have learned so you can bring it into your daily practice and your daily process. Because when you let it go completely, you almost become discombobulated in a way because you're you have this new information that's embedded in you and this information of this higher power of the supreme godhead that's now in your system and when you let it go it almost like it creates like an even stronger disconnect where your body and your soul almost has a taint relationship because you get you've given it this unconditional love and then suddenly it's just stripped away once again it's like you can't just give and take. You have to put effort and work into the relationship that you create with Krishna. Yeah. Are you saying you had a question or like this comment only? It's a comment. I just, yeah. it, that's what came yeah. up when I was talking. Sure. And um, you're not sure, like, I hope I didn't say that when we are in devotees association, we can be Krishna consciousness and not outside. Rather, we have to be Krishna consciousness conscious throughout wherever we are. But right now in my immature stage and throughout also, I need devotee association. This is what if I can, until my last physical breath, if I can glorify and if I can be of grateful of this devotee association and pray for association only. Today, Srimad Bhagavatam class, we read, right? Aham harita pade ka mula, dasanu daso bhavitas me bhuya. This is what Vitrasura is praying, that give me the association of what the devotees, I need training. I want training, I want more and more training. He's not saying that I've become pure now. I've got the message, I've learned from my mistake and all. No, more and more devotee association. Until my last breath, physical breath, say. And even then, throughout is, this is the prayer, Krishna, I'm not a match for you. Kindly give me your devotees association and they can train me, please. I allow myself to be trained under the guidance of devotees to be even that flexible, that I, I am open for you, say. 
So in devotee association, there's a natural Krishna Katha happening uh, because this is what devotee would do, right? When the devotees associate, they don't speak of women, they don't speak of money, they don't speak of like name, fame, and things like that. Shouldn't speak. Uh, pure Krishna Katha. And when we see people, if they go to pubs, clubs, what is generally talked about? The least would be, say, uh, yeah, generally what is discussed in pubs and all is uh, football, women, music, money, politics. So how we live in a practical world and how can we live in a practical world in a way that we still are in this world but not of this world. And currently what have become? We have become of this world. Of this world meaning we have sold ourselves to Maya Devi. Willingly. Ourselves. Arjuna realized this. He acknowledged, wow, hang on Krishna. I've given myself to a wrong person actually. I meant to be giving myself to you. So now Krishna, I surrender myself to you. Kind, You kindly sort me out. When we give ourselves to Krishna, that is when we find ourselves, we know ourselves in true sense. And since eternity, we have been giving ourselves to Maya Devi only and we live in confusion. Does that also tie in, Alexandra? Yes. Okay, so... Yeah, it's text 18 now, right? Yeah. Vistarenatmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana bhuya kathaya triptirhi shrinvato nasti me mritam. Okay, Hasha read translation and uh, Lucy Ali share purports, please. Oh, janardana. Again, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you. For the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. A similar statement was made to Sutta Gosvami by the Rishis of Naimasharanya, headed by Shanaka. Shanaka. That statement is Vayam tu te Vayam tu na Vayam tu na virayatam Vayam tu na vitrapyama uttama sloka vikrame Yashrin Vitam Rasagyanam Swadu Swadu Pade Pade. One can never be satiated, even though one continuously hears the transcendental pastimes of Krishna, who is glorified by excellent prayers. Those who have entered into, transcend into a transcend transcendental relationship with Krishna relish at every step the descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.19 Thus Arjuna is interested in hearing about Krishna and specifically how he remains as the all-pervading Supreme Lord. Now as far as our Artham, Amartham, nectar is concerned any narration of statement concerning krishna is just like nectar and this nectar can be perceived by practical experience modern stories fiction and histories are different from the transcendental pastimes of lord of the lord in that one will tire of hearing mundane stories but one never tires of hearing about krishna it is for this reason that only the history of the whole universe is replete Replete, replete with references to the pastimes of the incarnations of the Godhead. The Puranas, the Puranas are histories of the bygone ages that relate 
to the pastimes of the various incarnations of the Lord. In this way, the reading matter remains forever fresh despite repeated readings. O ja, O ja, Janardana, again, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you or or more, or the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. Read the last sentence in purport. In this way, the reading matter remains forever fresh despite repeated readings. See, that is Krishna consciousness. The reading matter, the chanting matter, the practice matter, the prasadam matter, the devotee association remains ever fresh, ever fresh, despite, say, repeated readings, eh? despite repeated hearing, despite the repeated chanting. And that is what transcendence means. That is what pleasure means. Pleasure should lead us into a path of further pleasure, right? Pleasure should never give us headache. Pleasure should not make us dizzy. Hmm? Pleasure should never... Like, um, it should never help us, like, say, intoxication for that matter, or that I even do not remember myself. I do not know who am I. Well, when I'm under the influence of intoxication, how would I know who am I? And then if I don't know who am I, where am I, what time and all, what will I end up doing? Something stupid only. So pleasure should lead us actually into more pleasure. And see, uh, Vedic literatures, the Puranas of which the Amala Puran is a uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, uh, the spotless Puran, the pure Puran complete without any tinge of material modes in it. So this is where the more and more Bhagavad Gita, the more and more Bhagavatam we read, the more one should become greedy the more one should become greedy. This should be the effect. Where in this world, we find, uh, again, what does satiation mean? It was there in the purport satiation. Bring the purport again, please. Suppose it's a common English word, right? Satiation. One is never. So after this it... loka, so. Mm -hmm. oh. One can never be satiated even though one. Yes continuously hears the transcendental pastimes of Krishna. Mm. What does say she? Like to be mm. fulfilled, satisfied, and yes. fully immersed in it. One can never feel satisfied enough, or oh, I've heard enough, I've chanted enough. See, <clears throat> Bhakti is only one thing which one can never say that I have done enough. Chapa is only one thing which one can never say that I have done enough Chapa. Or I've done for enough years. Or I've done Bhakti for enough years. I've done reading for enough years. I've read enough. I've listened enough. The, mo the moment in my head if I entertain this idea that actually I've done enough. Oh, then Krishna will say, okay, fine, enough is enough, sort of. Huh? Then if you are thinking that you've done enough and means, oh, I, you have done more than necessary, right? You can never say that I've done more than necessary, more than what is required, no. And one can never find satiation. So as in like one can never find tripti, satisfied. Huh? One can never find satisfaction actually that okay i've become completely satisfied in the sense yes materially one would be satisfied but spiritually always hungry spiritually always hungry and 
do we now this world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world it is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world and um, we are just playing roles in here we are we are trying to be little krishna no more no less than that we are trying to be imitate god cheap god little krishna there's a cartoon serial as well little krishna on youtube but that is showing krishna only little krishna we we are trying to swap role see this is the problem we want to swap role we want to become god and we want to god to serve us like krishna says in bhagavad gita bhuktaram yagya tapasam that i am the supreme enjoyer the supreme proprietor supreme maintainer supreme well wisher and we want to swap that role we want to become the supreme enjoyer we want to become the supreme uh, proprietor we want to become the supreme controller the supreme well wisher we want to act as little krishna and we are burning ourselves one would burn out himself so this society is actually a perverted reflection of the spiritual world and relations are there and the sort of relations everything but everything in here is very much i me and mine centered i me and mine and krishna consciousness means what radha krishna centered radha krishna pranah mohra jugal kishor radha krishna pranah mohra jugal kishor is this beautiful vaishnava song by shila narottam das thakur uh, so radha krishna pran mora my life and soul is radha krishna so a sadhaka a pure devotee is what like one who is always uh, relishing krishna past times who is glorifying krishna krishna is the bond the center the everything of one's life so in society okay screen hata sakte in society like although we see oh wow such a nectar movie although don't think people say like this it's more in devotee community we see nectar nectar uh, in in society even see like oh wow it was such a filthy movie meaning wow such a great movie it was right oh that was such a filthy game or people speak like this right oh that was so it was so dark it was so horribly funny sort of thing and all I mean, it was so great but uh, in devotee community in a, also in a respected civilization we shouldn't be using the oh, it was so filthy funny sort of thing no in a respected genuinely speaking in a respected culture society the choice of words has to be should be very good and naturally practicing krishna consciousness when one starts chanting japana on beads one would give up swearing using abusive foul language if one is in good association and practicing nicely chanting nicely there's a real life uh, thing here. Uh, a devotee in london she used to smoke hmm? and she used to come to central london so street she used to come to programs as well classes and kirtan and all and she had a uh, smoking tendency as well and once in a class she heard that uh, when krishna when we chant the holy names of krishna then krishna uh, appears in our tongue and he dances prabhupada had said on these lines this quote and thing so krishna appears in our tongue and actually he relishes he dances when we chant his holy name and when we honor krishna prasadam and also when we get this higher taste in life we give up the lord so when this lady she heard of this that oh wow when we chant the holy names of krishna krishna actually appears in my tongue and when she realized this it it struck a chord with her it really struck a big chord with her and then she decided okay from this day on i've heard of this higher taste as well and all from this day on let me see um i chant around as well and i will see my smoking thing as well and either of the other has to go because i know in my mind i know smoking is not good and all either of the other has to go i cannot continue with both so she started doing japa and more more japa and naturally she came to this like realization or 
this that I cannot afford to continue smoking. It gives me bad taste, foul mouth, not good for my health and all. And more so, I'm calling out the names of Krishna, the Lord of my life. I'm chanting the holy names of Krishna. And how can I allow um, for a cigarette to touch my tongue? No. So then that moment she quit and it was a natural quit. And since then, no going back and going more and more on Japa. Yeah. So this is Krishna consciousness. Material world means we will easily find our saturation. Nothing can saturate us because we are not matter, we are spirit. Yeah. But we are wrongly identifying happiness in a wrong place, in a wrong time, in a wrong way, in a wrong manner altogether. It's just like sugar cane juice. It is uh, sugar cane. It is sweet, juicy from every corner. Every corner. Now, uh, uh, a village person, a town person, he heard, oh wow, sugar cane is sweet from every corner. It's so relishable. Really? Wow, I would try that. I would like to try that. I never had it. Okay. Yeah, you should try that. Oh, what does a sugar cane look like? What is it? Well, it's like a long uh, stick and um, it has got like a cane and you peel it off and um, it, it's it's um, um, one has got to have strong teeth to be able to chew it. So the other person was giving some description of the sugar cane and this other guy, he, he went in search of sugar cane. Now let me find this sugar cane. And in, other than getting hold of sugar cane, he got hold of a bamboo cane. He got hold of a other cane, all other sorts of cane. And he start, started peeling them. He started chewing them. Now in the process, he was getting some juice out of it. But no, nothing in comparison to sugar cane. Nothing in comparison. And that is what exactly our situation is. We want joy. We are desperately searching for bliss, joy in life. But you know, how we are searching for bliss, joy in life, in this world, in this in life? Through woman, wealth, and wine. Yeah. This, through these means, um, complete materially absorbed physical platform on the physical sense, through these means. And one can never find saturation through woman, wealth, and wine in that sense. Yeah. Um, in the sense, through this uh, physical attraction to money, name, fame, possession. Uh, these are, this can never actually satisfy us. And this is why, see, this is the network, www. Is it not? www.google.com or whatever. And what it's a search engine or a network, this www. is more like a, nah, what the, what is the word like? A, in a way, um, this is what bind, is binding us actually, not freeing us at all. But we are spirit soul, spiritual beings, part and parcel of Krishna. We are hankering desperately to find that pure joy, but in a wrong manner, in a wrong place, in a wrong way. And this is why divine intervention, devotee intervention, when it appears in our life, comes in our life. We understand, oh, where is the real? Oh, that's a sugar cane. That's the real stuff. That's the real juice. This is how it is peeled and this is how it is chewed. And, and oh my gosh, all my life I was looking for sugar cane, but in wrong places. Never mind, I've come up here now. So I'll stick to it. In this world, we never find situation. But yeah, we are trying to read so many magazines, so many things and all that I become happy. But never situation, no. And this world is more like, you see, perverted or obscene, pornography oriented, that sort of thing altogether in this world. But unlike this, Vayam Tuna Vitra Pyama, Uttama Shloka Vikrame. Uttama Shloka again means Transcendental personalities, Vikrame is activities, you know, activities of Krishna. Uh, 
Yet Shrinvata Rasa Gyanam, when one gives good oral reception to it, hears the mellows he relishes and all at every step, swadu swadu pade pade, never satiating. And spiritual life, spiritual pleasure and all, oh, sorry, material life, material pleasure and all, I've had enough of it. I'm through it. I've had enough of it. And in Krishna consciousness, we can never, a genuine sadhaka, in, who, provided who is in taking good and association, he would never come to a position, situation, say, I've had enough of Krishna consciousness. I've got enough bliss. I've got enough mercy. No. It is mercy only one will feel that, no, I've not got enough. It is that bliss which will keep one more and more hankering, more and more greedy. And one can never say, oh, I have practiced enough of Krishna. I know enough of Bhagavad Gita. No, one can never. Uh, I've done enough. Bhakti is only one thing which one cannot do enough. Rest, yeah, enough. I've watched enough football. I've watched enough um, uh, cricket. I've watched enough movies. I've done en enough traveling. I've done enough flirting. Everything, yes. Okay, any thoughts, questions, or comments? Is it not like Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, this can be read over and over again? Huh? And when we go any supermarket, the magazines and all this content, uh, what are being sold, it becomes so stale, so stale, so boring. We need every time everything new, new. Why? Because we cannot, whatever is in the market cannot keep up to our desire. The soul's desire is for pure happiness. And there's nothing available in the market, so we need new. And now web series, wow. The very name itself, what does the name web series mean? Uh, A TV series on the website? Yeah. On the internet? What, mm, and what does web mean, say? General sense. A trap. Yeah, web series means hooked. Trap, yeah. Hooked. Is it not? Yeah. Such a web, difficult to come out of it. Such a web. And web series, oh wow. No? Sometimes like um, just one movie, one episode or this thing. But no, no. Make it a series, a regular occurrence. And then get your audience trapped, hooked into it. Little do they people could realize that, okay, rather than buying something, I have actually sold myself. Yeah. Who is the product? I am the product dancing in the tune of Maya. Web series, very little, very little. We are giving our heart and soul. Market, media, pub. Sorry, you've got a question? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I was thinking about this today, actually, that do you think to practice any kind of spirituality or Krishna consciousness um, just to end suffering is a good enough reason like because I think a lot of people maybe come to spirituality from a place of suffering like you mentioned but is that intention like a good enough intention or do you need to anyone who approaches Krishna for whatever like to even get rid of suffering that is respected that is acknowledged that is good but why one has approached Krishna right huh? Uh, so Krishna sees that, and what wrong is it in is is in there that oh, I want to get rid of suffering? That's a good thing, but it it is not like the ultimate or things. Again, um, this should not be my see when coming to Krishna consciousness. I may come with this consciousness, this mood, or so, oh wow! If I practice Krishna consciousness, I shouldn't be suffering. Then wow, fine. I may go with this. But then when I start practicing, 
I shouldn't be stuck up or hung up, okay? Suffering and joy, suffering and joy, actually, no. I shouldn't be hung up in this sort of duality. And practicing Krishna consciousness, suffering is bound to come. It is not that in this war, Arjuna did not have to suffer. After the dialogue, having this dialogue, Arjuna had to go through a lot of suffering, a lot of tribulation. But he did not experience any pain. He did not experience any pain. So Prabhupada says, beautiful, suffering is compulsory, but pain is optional. Or how does it go? Does it go the other way or which way? You correct me now. Yeah, it's um, something like, yeah, you can experience pain, but you choose suffering because suffering is attaching yourself to the pain. Yeah. Or rather, is it pain is compulsory, but one need not suffer from the pain. Yeah. Pain is also a human mindset. Like we choose to transform that suffering into pain instead of seeing it as some as like a lesson that we are learning until and unless we have devotee association krishna consciousness vision vision will not be ignited it won't come about and there's lots to explore and uh, get in life this is barely a beginning barely a beginning there's way more than this way more so if i like your question if someone starts uh, one's journey wanting to get rid of suffering, that is also good. At least the person is respecting oneself, right? Acknowledging. But then it's kind of almost, it almost feels like a selfish desire. It's like, I want to get rid of suffering, therefore I am going to do this instead of like, oh, I've heard of See, I can I'm never be like, it, it can never be, okay, first let me become pure and then I practice Krishna consciousness. It can never be the case that first let me become less selfish and then I practice Krishna consciousness. No, we would be waiting actually. We would end up waiting lifetime for it. Huh? So to begin with is fine, but I need not end on this note. This should not become my ultimate motivation then. To begin with is fine, but it shouldn't be when we go to school the beginning of the session we do not understand and all and we commit mistakes and all but when comes the final examination through the throughout the year the course the teacher she would like us to pass right she wouldn't like us to commit those mistakes in the examination so likewise to begin with is fine even though i'm motivated out of suffering i'm motivated out of fear i'm motivated out of desires also whatever but Krishna is smart enough. He will give us pure love. And it is only pure love which can alleviate all of this. So we do not want to, we are not after, or we do not want to attain Godhead so that, okay, no more suffering. That's not a healthy motivation. And we just cannot please Krishna like this. So we cannot knock on Krishna's door. Let me in. Why? Oh, there's too much of trouble down there. Oh, so you want me because you want to get rid of trouble? No. And this is not the prayer of what our Acharyas also pray. And in our, in general dealing, right? In our general relationships, in our general dealing, this is, isn't a very healthy motivation, not a sustainable healthy motivation. And thing is, once we are enamored by the beauty of Krishna, uh, one would be ready to take on any suffering or one would come out of this complaint or any sort of self-centeredness so to answer to your question here yeah, to begin with is fine but we need not end up with that motivation does that answer your question lucy it does yeah Some some catalyst has to be there, right? Some catalyst has to be there. You know um, how smart actually Krishna is, or his his ways of dealing. Again, on, only a pure devotee can actually understand. But uh, 
we need some catalyst. So this suffering is also like a catalyst in the sense, uh, now it is not so much, but previously in Bollywood movies, um, there was a common theme say, um, uh, like um, the hero, he, he sent some rough boys uh, to the heroine and they disturb her. Uh, and then the hero comes in the scene and he sees, okay, some rough boys are harassing this girl. So the hero intervenes and he tries then punches them, kicks them and everything. And he sends them away altogether. And he wins the heart of the girl, the woman say, and the woman, wow, he's such a gentle man. And you see this face, but what the hero himself arranged, right? He paid money to those boys. He told them, okay, go you go this day this time you will find her there in that shop or in this market and you go and uh, you tell her this thing and when i i will come and we know the story right so in many ways uh, once we in devotee association once our vision is ignited we will see everything as a mercy of krishna everything in a way to bring me closer to him even that suffering when that suffering is good what ends up me getting Krishna, is it not good? It's so lovable, wow. Thank God I had a headache that day. So I went to devotees. Thank God I had a toothache that day. I didn't go out, I went to that program and all. So this suffering is also good. We need not end on that suffering. As we grow, continue in the practice of Krishna consciousness, our only motivation should be the sweet smile of Krishna, the sweet face of Krishna, the sweet longing, and that relation. And furthermore, there's lots more uh, deep end to it. But for now, does this satisfy your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we can experience, test ourselves, check ourselves. Nothing in this world can actually saturate me. It can get my attention, surely, for a short span of time only, though. Yeah? It can have my attraction. It can have my attention. It can have. I can be possessed, but I can never feel satiated. And the more I become possessed, the more shallow I will feel. That's the Life's Web Series. And in here as well, Krishna is also a run up web series, Veda based, complete web series, is it not? Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya, Chaitamit. If we immerse ourselves in this transcendental pastimes of Krishna, we'll, no, we'll find nothing but more and more nourishment, more and more encouragement. Okay, let us see next. And. Um, yeah, okay, text 19. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Hantate te, hantate kathai siyami divyayatma vibhutaya pradhan yata krikuru shreshta nasti anto vistaraya vistarasya me. Okay, uh, Alessandra, read translation and um, maybe Harsha can read Purport, please. Harsha and Lucy can share the Purport. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead oh, said, yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. It is not possible to comprehend the greatness of Krishna and his opulences. The senses of the individual soul are limited and do not permit him to understand the totality of Krishna's affairs. Still, the devotees try to understand Krishna, but not on the principle that they will be able to understand Krishna fully at any specific time or in any state of life. Rather, the very topics of Krishna are so relishable 
that they appear to the devotees as nectar. Thus the devotees enjoy them. In discussing Krishna's opulences and his diverse energies, the pure devotees take transcendental pleasure. Therefore, they want to hear and discuss them. Krishna knows that living entities do not understand the extent of his opulences. He therefore agree, agrees to state only the principal manifestations of his different energies. The word Pradhantaya, principle, is very important because we can understand only a few of the principal details of the Supreme Lord. For his features are unlimited. It is not possible to understand them all. And Vibhuti, as used in this verse, refers to the opulences by which he controls the whole manifestation. In the Amara Kosa dictionary, it is stated that Vibhuti indicates an exceptional opulence. The impersonalist or pantheist cannot understand the exceptional opulences of the Supreme Lord, nor the manifestations of his divine energies, both in the material world and in the spiritual world. His energies are distributed in every variety of manifestation. Now Krishna is describing what can be directly perceived by the common man. Thus, part of his variegated energy is described in this way. The Supreme Personality of Godhead says, yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. How are you all finding the study of Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Getting satiated? I mean, as much as what we're getting from it, if we went to all the classes, probably. So you say again, as much as? As much as we're getting from it, if we went to all the classes, yeah. Yeah. So it's one thing to the study of Bhagavad Gita, practice of Krishna consciousness. One will find satisfaction and at the same time unsatisfied as well. As in greed. And this greed has to grow more. This greed has to grow more intense. One has to become even more greedy and greedy. There's no... This is why like devotees say, Krishna consciousness, not even sky is the limit. It's like now to put Somehow we have to describe and all our minds can take it. So yeah, it's as deep as the ocean or even deeper than ocean, as high as the sky or higher than the sky. That thing. And Krishna himself, look, Krishna being asked on, Krishna said, no, hang on, I cannot. Uh, uh, when Arjuna asked, tell me of your opulences and all in detail. Uh, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences, right? The previous shloka we read. I'm, I'm never satiated. This is a, again a symptom. One would never feel like I've had enough or full and all. No, always wanting more. So tell me in more details of your opulences. I want to hear more and more. And Krishna is replying like, I will tell, but only which are like prominent or main. I cannot tell you all because... I myself do not know all. I myself do not know all for my opulence is limitless. Now there's this saying, right? Hari Ananta, Hari Katha Ananta. Yeah. Anant is unlimited. Krishna is unlimited. Krishna 
katha krishna topic krishna pastime is all unlimited krishna's mercy is also unlimited so when we come across krishna consciousness and we transfer transform ourselves into that we can we should to that unlimited range uh, zone level all together when we uh, stay in tune with devotee association and again see one would never feel one would well in a way one would always feel like incomplete why because we can never define uh, krishna what is the definition of complete even complete falls completely short of defining krishna but having said that that doesn't mean that uh, okay it's completely undefinable as it says in the purport right that still the would is try still try and we should try as well to understand to describe to define we can never come up with a pure poetry and choice words and all but it says in bhagavatam that um, just like the child speaking of a child faltering he's learning to walk he's learning to stand up he's learning to speak so it's very very faltering voice he speaks but for parents wow the first word they call out when the child calls out the first word parents are so joyous when the child takes takes the first step when the child is able to maintain his balance wow they are so joyous likewise uh, even though the child is speaking gibberish say uh, faltering but parents don't my parents love that likewise even if my gl- glorification to krishna is very short of say uh, not full and it can never be full but krishna likes that krishna likes that so it is not like again krishna consciousness is not about quantity it's definitely not about quantity it is purely quality but this and the paradox the world runs purely quantity not much quality wise as such more on quantity quantification means what more on externals more on externals and quality is what more internal more contemplative which the world struggles to understand at a very large level so <clears throat> the other day we asked this question right one of the name of krishna is anant means infinite unlimited limitless now krishna's glory a krishna is he anant is he limitless to us conditioned souls or for is he limitless for him and himself as well this is a question let me know if you would want me to repeat the question <clears throat> sorry can you repeat it please <clears throat> anant means limitless infinite unlimited now is krishna unlimited to us conditioned souls or is he unlimited to himself as well to both himself as well as us Arsha Ali uh, Lakshmi Mata ji any thoughts thing that came that was the first thing that came to my mind was both like unlimited to his devotees and to himself so do you have a second thing as well then it, it's more like like if he is supreme godhead then he is limitless so it's like does he even know his own vastness so krishna is unlimited limitless we cannot find the shores the end of him as conditioned soul and pure devotees they never attempt they never go that route it is a conditioned soul who might actually want you know, and also in his um, adamant nature 
he might want to try to find, oh, we, we get excited, right? Oh, okay, I will find the end of God. No, we can never reach the limit. And we should never try. And a pure devotee never goes in that path, in that road. No, this is why we say that Krishna consciousness begins where material uh, academic knowledge finds its limit, finds its saturation. From then point on, Krishna consciousness begins. Arjuna, he found his saturation. He found his limit. He knew that, oh, this is beyond me. And that this is humility. This is humility. This is not a sign of weakness. This is a sign of strength. So Arjuna approached Krishna. He said, I need your shelter now. Likewise, when I find actually, when I genuinely realize, okay, no, this is beyond me. That is when I give up the doer mentality and I come under the shelter, the energy, the power of Krishna. And Krishna used me then as an instrument. Not un until unless I've got this in my head, okay, this is within me, this is within me. So, Krishna, he is limitless, of course, for conditioned souls. Huh? He is unlimited, of course, for conditioned souls. He is unlimited for his pure devotee and for himself as well, he is unlimited. It's not like for himself he knows himself fully and it's not that he can know himself fully as well krishna his energies are always expanding and he's relishing newer and newer rasas joy mellow with his pure devotees he doesn't know what tricks and trips his pure devotees come up with his associates come up with and they also don't know what Krishna ticks, trips and ticks Krishna come up with. But that is all absolute, all one-sided, all sweet, all joyous. Without any tinge of material sense in it. Without any tinge of self-centeredness in it. Krishna's devotees are completely Krishna-centered. And Krishna is completely devotee-centered. Both are sold out to each other. And by us hearing this message, we benefit. We now aspire to sell ourselves to Krishna unconditionally, fully exclusively. So this is what Krishna is saying, that my energies, my opulence is limitless, unlimited. I, I, I myself find no limit to it. So how can I describe to you? Ah, even Krishna is beyond some things. What Krishna never experiences, what is lack of knowledge? What is dullness? What is moral? What is material? Krishna doesn't know. He never experiences what is like a material body and all. Like sun. Can sun ever experience darkness? The sun god, the sun entity. Can he ever experience darkness? No. The goddess of learning. Can she ever experience, uh, let's say, stupidity, lack of knowledge? No. Uh, the treasurer of um, the heavenly planets. Can he ever experience scarcity? No. Always opulence. So likewise, Krishna, he's so limitless. This is a, maybe one may say there's a limitation on him. But actually limitless, but when he comes with his pure. He finds his limit there because they overpower him. They beat him. He finds his end there. Oh my God, I have trapped. I have been cornered altogether. I don't know now next. What can I do? That is Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. And that's a transcendental mood which in which we have a right. But we need to come to that standard to be able to exercise that right. Does okay. this... I mean, the relationship with which Krishna and Krishna's devotees share, that's a transcendental relationship altogether, wherein when he's in the company of his, well, he's always in the company of his pure associates. And his pure associates, 
they limit krishna as in they krishna becomes limited by their power of love krishna finds himself uh, Um, uh, uh, so he himself tells that I I cannot match up I cannot come up with your level of love. So Krishna is limitless for us conditioned souls. But when he is in with his pure devotees, his pure associates, brajvasis, especially gopis, he finds his limit. And that is Krishna consciousness. and we have to prepare ourselves it will be natural preparation as well krishna consciousness is anything but an imaginary fairy tale and just for the sake of discussion even if it's an imaginary fairy tale it is a very sweet imaginary fairy tale so i would definitely recommend advice take on board in this imaginary fairy tale even if it did be an imaginary fairy tale it is so sweet so relishable and our hands don't get dirty and the fairy tale of this society may be sweet may be relishable may be appealing but the consequence is not good hands do get dirty hands do get dirty and we have seen experienced people those who engage themselves involve themselves so much of in the material imaginary fairy tale who got so much sucked in hooked in they completely lost themselves does this help and any thoughts questions or comments okay then i think we'll leave it here for today Uh, we'll continue tomorrow thank you for your patient listening and encouragement we meet up tomorrow hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna thank you